So, hello everyone and welcome back. And in this lecture, I'm going to install Python Power Electron. So, before we continue, let's go to our web browser. Let's open a new tab and let us type the following link Python Power Electronics. Dot com. So, this is the home page of the circuit simulator. This contains every information that you need. It contains links to download the software. It contains updates, every kind of update that happens with respect to the project. It, is, it has white papers. It has even things like some sample cases of sample circuits which have been simulated. Go through this entire circuit simulator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the circuit simulator and install it. So, in this download file, right, when you click on downloads, that is, let's go back and do it. When you click on downloads, you will reach this software downloads page. This is where all the versions of this, all every release that I have ever made with respect to the circuit simulator is listed. So, all files are list listed as .zip and .tar .gz files. Now, since it's a Windows system, we'll just use the .zip file. So, there are typically two types of files. And I think I've already described it. There are there is what is called web app, which is web application. This is the Django based web server application, which is what we're going to use. And there is also the command line, which we will not use. Right? Command line needs a little bit of advanced knowledge of command line, which I would rather skip in this course. So let's pick up the latest version that is there. So let's click on it. And it has downloaded. So this would have downloaded to the downloads folder. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to copy this from here, go to downloads, and I'm going to create a new folder called simulator. This is in documents. It can be anywhere, but it, let's just choose documents because it's easy to reach. And let's copy this folder, or rather zip file. I'm going to extract it here. And I'm going to open it. So, if you see, there is actually an embedded file. It doesn't matter. There's just an extra file that got added. But there is a simulator interface. This is where all your files are. All right. This is where all my files are. And to give you a basic overview of this, I'll talk about requirements. This requirements file soon. The license file is the software license file. This is the open source software that I'm using. And you can, of course, look into it. So, this is the open source software. You are always welcome and I would suggest have a look at it once because this tells you how the software can be used and what are the conditions of using the software. So, once before you use this software, please do have a look at this license agreement. Now, after that, there are certain other files which are the actual simulator files. Simulator interface is the settings of the simulator. So, that is what is the setting, how this simulator actually is work, what are the settings with respect to the simulator work. Simulation is the actual core simulation files. So, for this, now I will go back to the requirements.txt. So, as I said in the previous lecture, you could install the requirements of the sim circuit simulator manually or we use what is called as a requirements file. This requirements file has already been written. Now, you see here, I have listed out the requirements of this circuit simulator. And there are two, Django and Matplotlib. Never mind this, the formatting. The formatting is just done with respect to Linux and it has been exported to Windows. So, therefore, it looks different. So, for this, what we are going to do is, we are going to start by creating a new environment. So, let's create a new environment and let's call it PP for Python Power Electronics. So, we have successfully created this environment. Let's activate it. So, we have activated the environment. Now, what we are going to do is, we are going to go into this simulation folder. So, we are going to go into documents, simulator and into this folder PPE web app. So, let's do so in the conda environment. So, what I am going to do is I am going to change directory. Let us list out the directories which is there. 
or rather I need to use DIR because this is now Windows. So, strange. Within documents, I have simulator. And within simulator, I have my PPE web app. And once again, it's an embedded directory. Now, here I have my requirements.txt file. So, like I said before, I could go ahead and do conda install Django. And I could also do conda matplotlib in the same line. It is possible. I can do this. But it is always better to use this requirements.txt file. So, what you have to do is you have to just specify conda install. And instead of specifying the name of the package, you specify the name of the file. So, you need to use this argument dash dash file to say that what's coming here is not the name of a package, it is the name of the file which contains the dependencies. So, I'm going to just click on yes. And as before, this will take its time. So, let it, I'll pause the video and come back to it. So, the installation is finally done. Let's look at what happened. It has added these two packages. Now, I have specifically, because in the requirements.txt file, I have specified not only the package, but also the package name, but also the version. So, I specified that Django should be a version 2.0.2 and matplotlib should be a version 2.2.2. This is just because I have tested my circuit simulator with these two packages and it's better that we install the same packages just to make sure that there is no bug. So, it now looks at these two packages. All right. So, it now looks, says that it needs to download these two packages and it will install the remaining packages. So the question is where did these packages come from? These packages were already downloaded when we actually created all the previous environments. So this is stored in cache memory. And because it's stored in cache memory, it doesn't have to download it again. It uses it from the cache memory. So it has only downloaded two packages because in the previous time we actually installed another version of Django, another version of matplotlib. So, these two had to be downloaded and installed. So, with this we are ready to go. So, let us look at what is happening. As I said, in this requirements.txt is mainly an installer file. Now, this is our main folder, right? And the main folder, the most important file is manage.py file. So, let me go into it. Here I see manage.py. The manage.py file is like my launch file. It's like the run.exe file or the setup.exe file or one of those files. It's almost like a launch file. Now, the first thing is so we are going to, whatever we do from now onwards, we are going to do it with manage.py. So, Django and the circuit simulator uses a database. For example, it uses a database to store all the simulation data. It stores every simulation case that you create every component that you create, the database, everything is stored in the database. This is so that you do not lose information because it is stored in a database. That's the advantage. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to create this database. And for that, we need to type these following commands. So, I'll just break this down and tell you what's happening. I am running the manage.py file, which I said is the most important file that's like your launcher file. So I'm running it using Python. So I'm saying Python manage.py, that's like double clicking on an exe file. And I'm saying make migration simulation. So simulations is the circuit simulator. This in this folder simulations, this is where all the circuit simulator files are stored. So I am saying use this simulations folder to create your migrations to create all the database structure that is make migration. So I'm saying use this use this folder to migrate to the database structure. Okay, that's what this command means. So I'm going to enter and it has created all the database. You see it says create model, create ammeter, create capacitor. So these are all tables. These are all tables within the database and it has created all the tables. So now we are ready to write the database. So, what we have to do now is the same file manage.py, we say migrate. So, we have created the database structure. Now, we are saying use this database structure 
to write it to the database. So therefore, we are actually formally creating the database. And with this, the database has been written. So, now that the database has been written, now that we are ready with the database, we are now ready to launch the circuit simulator. So, for that, I'm going to now again use manage.py. Remember, manage.py is now your crucial file. All you have to do is say run server. So, I'm now saying go ahead and launch my server. And you see, this message says that the servers have been successfully launched. System identified, no issues, zero silence. That means you are ready to go. And this development server is available at this link. So we'll copy the link. Make sure you copy the entire link, not just one part of it, the entire link from one slash to the other. Go to the web browser and paste it. And this is our circuit simulator. So, we have been able to launch the circuit simulator using our command line. And now, later on, I'll show you that all you have to do is launch the circuit simulator and you're ready to go. So, with this, I'm going to end this lecture. If you have any doubts or if anything didn't work in this step or you found any other unexpected error, please do post in the Q&A forum and I'll be happy to help you. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you so much. Goodbye for now.